Hello, friends of St. Peter's, and thank you so much for joining us on this glorious Sunday morning. We're delighted to have you worshiping with us, whether you are here for the first time because you saw this video go by in your newsfeed, uh, thanks to a friend who liked or shared it, or whether you're a longtime member of St. Peter's. We want to invite you to uh, look at the description of this video because both on YouTube and Facebook, you'll see a link to the bulletin, which will allow you to follow along, sing along, say your part, and work with us as we make this worship together. We are delighted to have with us uh, some uh, gold star readers in Penelope and Caroline. Thank you for being with us. And Bishop Chilton Knudsen is with us as our guest preacher. And I am over the moon that we have Bishop Chilton with us. Chilton was my first bishop as a rector, which is a very special relationship because I had an incredibly steep learning curve. I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, and Bishop, Ch <laughs> Bishop Chilton had a way of helping me learn what I didn't know I didn't know that was gentle and kind and helped me be a much better priest. And um, those who have later um, worked with me have given me credit for a whole lot that Bishop Chilton actually taught me. And I'm just delighted that I get to share her with you today. I wish she was here in person, but I'm so grateful that she can be with us from Maryland as she is currently serving as the assisting bishop in the Diocese of Washington. So Bishop Chilton, welcome. We also have with us some beautiful music courtesy of Tasha and all of our musicians. So thank you to our musicians as well. Speaking of music, our opening hymn is not here for high and holy things.
blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, and be King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. Also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And praying together the prayer for rain. O oh God, God, Heavenly Father, Father, who by your Son, Jesus Christ, has Jesus promised Christ to all promised those who seek your kingdom seek your and its righteousness, its righteousness all things necessary, all things necessary, necessary to, sustain, to their life. sustain their life. Send us, we Send entreat us, we you, in this, in this time of need, such moderate rain, such moderate rain and showers, and shower, that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to your honor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Eod died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Haroseth, Ah Goinim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lipidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kedish in Nafaltin, and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go, take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Javin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kisham, and with his chariots and his troops. I will give him into your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 123, please respond responsibly by whole verse. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he show us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. 
too much of the scorn for the indolent rich and of the diversion of the proud. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of love and faith, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has des destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, It is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who received two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of these slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I, where I did not scatter? then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. 
for to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Great to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. Well, I'm delighted. Uh, we invite our youngest friends around the phone or the iPad or the TV screen with YouTube on it. Uh, I can't wait to introduce you to my friend and my bishop from my time in Maine, Bishop Chilton Knudsen. And she has a few words for the youngest members amongst us this morning. Welcome, Bishop Chilton. Good morning, boys and girls. It's so good to be with you. One of the things that I wanted to do is tell you a story from the time when I was a girl. I was lucky because in my family, my parents every week gave me an allowance. How many of you get an allowance from your parents? That means a little bit of money that is yours to spend that they give you maybe every week, maybe every month. But I got 10 cents a week. That was my allowance. And in my growing up years, that felt like a lot of money. What we had in our family was a tradition that you would get your allowance on Saturday morning after breakfast. And so we'd bring our little coin purses and we would put our, our allowance in them. The allowance was always the same. It was a nickel and five pennies. And we were supposed to take one of those pennies, that's one penny and put it aside so that we could put it in the collection plate at church. Some people call that the tithe. One out of 10 pennies goes to the church. The rest of it, we were encouraged to put in our piggy bank. And so it was fun because I had a metal piggy bank to drop the coins in and hear them go clink, clink, clink. And it just got heavier and heavier until the time when my dad, who had the key, would unlock it and let me turn it into money, paper money. Then we'd start the process all over again. So boys and girls, one day my father said to me, let's take everything in your piggy bank and we'll put it in this envelope and we'll take it to the bank and we'll put it in the bank the bank down the street, the bank that's in a building. I didn't want that to happen. I cried. I said, no, I want it in my piggy bank where I can feel it and touch it and have it. No, he said, you want to put your money in the bank, the Farmers National Bank in Annapolis, Maryland. The building still stands, by the way. And so really resistant but eager to do what my dad told me to do, I went to the bank and I carried in my piggy bank and I was shaking it, enjoying the noise of the coins. And the woman at the bank told me, if you put this in the bank, you will get a little book and that little book will tell you how much money you have in the bank. It's a little book. And I couldn't wait to get a book with my own name on it. And so I did. A little bit later, my father invited me to go to the bank and take another of the piggy bank coins, another batch and put them in the bank. He said, you have to bring your little book with you. Well, here's what I found out. If you put your money in the bank, the bank pays you a little money for the privilege of having your money in their bank. It's called interest. So when I went the second time and the third time and the fourth time to the bank, I always handed over my book. The lady stamped my book and I saw that the number was bigger every time. And so boys and girls, here's what I wanna to suggest to you. After you have had piggy bank as your major place where you keep your money, your allowance or your Christmas presents or your birthday gifts or whatever 
the money that you get because you do chores, whatever that money represents. Then someday take that money to the bank so that you can get paid extra that interest that the bank is going to give you. And you'll watch your money will increase. And then you can do more things with it. And so we have a piggy bank that keeps money safe, but it doesn't grow the amount of money. And we have a bank account, a savings account, where the money does grow and you keep track of it in your little book. Although nowadays, I bet you keep track of it on your smartphone <laughs> or some, some other device like that. But one of the things I wanna tell you now as we finish this time is everything we have comes from God. Every penny that we have, every toy that we have, every friend that we have, uh, every day that is a day we live one more day in our life is a gift from God. All of it is a gift. And so would you join me in saying thank you to God? Thank you, God, for everything you give us. Thank you so much, God. You are a generous God, and we are so blessed. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. I understand you have a song for us now. And so grown-ups, I don't know whether you were eavesdropping on the sermon that I just shared with the children, but I want to just bring back into the room and into our awareness the difference between a piggy bank and a bank account. It really tells the story about this parable. What the man who was given one talent did was he basically put it in a kind of piggy bank. He dug a hole in the ground and buried the money and didn't take it out until the master came and asked him to show what he had. But there were two other people who were given money and they did something like a savings account. They actually made money with the money he gave them. Increased, in fact, not a bad yield, I would say, if it's about a 100% return. If you give me five talents and I render 10 to you when you're home, that's a good thing. And so here's what this story teaches us. We are meant to be responsible with our money. And where we can, we are meant to grow our money. We're meant to put it in the bank or invest it in some other way so that it gets larger. Because then we can do more things with it we can help more people, we can make a generous pledge to our church, ahem, ahem, and all of those things that we can do that are just blessing to others. We can give someone a gift, we can make a donation, we can help a person who's homeless, 
find a meal. We can bless our friends by sending them a little gift or a little amount of money on their birthday or their Christmas or any of their celebration days. And so earning money with your money is a good thing. And failing to do that because you're afraid is the object of the story here. The master scolds the slave who was afraid. So I wonder how many times in our lives we make a decision not to grow, to grow our gifts, to grow our money, to grow our friendships, not to grow because we're afraid. When we are afraid, the possibilities in our life shrink down and we don't see all the options available to us. Fear tends to make us very narrow-minded and narrow-visioning. So it's clear that the master did not affirm the faith of the slave who was afraid, but he did affirm the faith of the two who took the money and made it grow. One of the things that I want to say about this parable is the, the story that is told here is a story that reminds us that we are responsible that God entrusts us with the gifts we have. Every penny we have, every item, every object we have in our life, every relationship we have, uh, every bit of good days, every bit of bad days, every bit of opportunities that open up for us, all of these things are gifts. And our life is a grateful response to the generosity of God. Our life is also an opportunity to bless God, to thank God, because God trusts us. Just like the master trusted the slaves, God trusts us. God invests in us. God gives us what we have as an investment. I think we get some good direction from Holy Scripture about what God wants us to do with what we are given. God wants us to be generous, to care for each other, to pass along what we have, to share with others, to support good efforts on behalf of the human community. So the greatest gift of all that we have received and we receive day by day is the gift of Jesus, the greatest gift of all. We are meant not only to receive him as a gift and to express and live gratefully, but we're also meant to pass Jesus on to others as the gift that Jesus can be for them. So all of this gospel truth about our material possessions, about what we have been given, is a reminder don't let fear control your decisions. When fear does, you don't see opportunities and possibilities. You live in a more shrunken kind of life. And when you have been blessed, part of what you have to do is offer blessing to other people. God did not mean for you to accumulate and accumulate and accumulate. God meant for you to have what you need and maybe even what you want, some of what you want. But God also means for your blessings to be available to others whom you bless out of your generosity. We wake up every morning knowing that God has entrusted all of this to us. We also wake up every morning knowing that at some point, God is going to ask us about it. God is going to say, so what did you do with what I've given you? When that moment comes, that moment when the master returns and asks the slaves to show what they have, I believe that moment, which is a moment of judgment, isn't it? That moment is wrapped in mercy, wrapped in mercy. So without being fearful, we can share with God what we have been able to do with what God has blessed us with. And that moment, is filled with love and mercy and a deep sense of gratitude on our parts that we not only could receive gifts, but share them.
and in so doing, make a big difference in God's world. Thank God for that. Amen. And with grateful hearts for all that God has entrusted to us and all that God trusts in us, let us raise our voices together in the creed of our baptism, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the prayers of the people, now is a wonderful time to put in the comments, both on YouTube and Facebook, any birthdays or anniversaries you'd like us to celebrate with you this week. rise from our spiritual complacency and offer our prayers to God, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. That our local and federal judges may have the wisdom of the prophet Deborah, whose strength was revealed in passing judgment for condemnation when necessary and for growth when warranted. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may clothe each other with faith and love, hope and salvation, encouraging one another in discipleship and building up one another for the growth of Christ's body, the church. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may expose our gifts to the light of day, using them as instruments of salvation for those who live on the margins of society and for those who, though rich, may have emptiness too painful to expose. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our treasures of time and money may be used wisely to our personal benefit and for the betterment of our church and society. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may come to the glory of that place where the noise of daily life has given way to the peace of eternal rest. Let us pray. Lord, hear, Lord, our, prayer. hear our prayer. Most mighty and merciful God, in this time of great sickness, we flee to you for relief and comfort. Deliver us, we beseech you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use for their cure. Comfort those who mourn or who are in great financial distress. And do our leaders with wisdom and courage. And grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts to that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have a mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Indeed. Please share with one another the signs of God's peace. And we will bring our hearts together in love as we share our birthday and anniversary prayer. Watch over thy servants, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, at the time of our offertory, I just want to say again how grateful I am to all of you for being so incredibly generous at this most uncertain time. Your generosity has been consistent and strong and humbling. It truly has. If you'd like to make a gift to St. Peter's, you may do so by text to give. That phone number is 858-252-0622. You can also give online at stpetersdelmar.net slash give and make a one-time gift or set up a regular pledge offering. You can also send a check in the mail to St. Peter's at P.O. Box 336, Delmar, California, 92014. Walk in love, as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And together, let us say the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And Bishop Knudsen or Bishop Shulton, would you please offer us a blessing? But first, we need to ask you to unmute. <laughs> I have a blessing I love, a Franciscan blessing, and I offer it for us now. May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may seek truth deep in your heart. May God bless you with holy anger at injustice and oppression, that you may tirelessly work for justice and freedom and peace among all people. May God bless you with the gift of tears to shed with those who suffer from pain or rejection or starvation or loss, that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and bring them into a place of joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in this world so that you are able with God's grace to do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God, creator, savior, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, bless and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Bishop Chilton, thank you so much for being with us. You have blessed me so much um, in my life and in my ministry, and it's just a treat to get to share you with the people I love here at St. Peter's. So uh, we look forward to a time when you can be with us in person, but this is a tremendous gift to us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we're also delighted to welcome to this service Melissa Collins Porter, our junior warden, who will be offering an announcement from our vestry meeting, which we just had last Tuesday. Hello, I'm Melissa Collins Porter, your junior warden. Uh, last Tuesday, your vestry had its monthly meeting. Our thrilling news is that we have approved a contractor for our Trinity expansion project. Peggy Martin, serving as our owner's rep, is very pleased with the price and expertise of the bid from First Mark, and we are going forward with them to break ground on December 1st. First Mark has extensive experience working in Redwood, in renovations and restorations, and is especially skilled at doing construction on sites that are operational. A real blessing for helping hands on the thrift shop. Special thanks to Peggy, Kit Leager, our architect, and the Building Expansion Committee. Thank you to all who have pledged and given to this project already. If you have not had a chance to do so, we encourage you to prayerfully consider joining us in making this dream a reality as it will benefit our children's ministry, music ministry, and our thrift shop and its ministry to the larger community. Please contact Mother Page for more information. A special edition Spirit and Times will be headed your way with more information about this project for those of you who are newer to St. Peter's and eager to learn more about it. Our controller, Heather Vaden, gave the most recent finance report. October was a very good month thanks to your generosity. Thank you. So far, we have received over $360,000 in pledges for 2021. We're excited to share that every vestry member has pledged. If you haven't, please do join us. It will make your heart glad. We also discussed nominations for the 2021 vestry class. 
If you feel called or know someone who would be a great candidate, please let me or someone on Vestry know. We also heard from the formation committee that our Bible studies, small groups, and sacred ground circles are going strong. There's still space in a fourth circle to be formed. Please contact Nancy McMahon if you're interested in joining. Please pray for your rector, staff, and vestry as we prepare for this remote Advent season. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa, and to um, all who attended last, last week's remarkable vestry meeting. It is really an exciting time. A few other brief announcements. Some of you uh, saw the invitation video from Caroline and her friends inviting you to buy Christmas greens to support our youth. Right, Caroline? And, and some of you, you bought wonderful greens and some of you forgot. I know, the deadline went by, but Lee has you covered. If you are interested still in getting green, she got a few extra. So please email Lee Conkle at lconkle at stpetersdelmar.net and she will hook you up. It is hard to believe that <laughs> it feels like it's been the longest Lent ever, but here Advent is upon us uh, and Advent is in two weeks. Next Sunday, the 22nd, we have our pre-Advent drive through where you'll have a chance to pick up your Advent wreath making kit um, and pick up some other Advent goodies from us. We hope you will RSVP. This is a project for children of all ages. Please let Sarah know at sholmes at stpetersdelmar.net. Uh, we do encourage all of us to really embrace an in-home practice of Advent this year. So go ahead and, and make your wreath and uh, have a holy and sacred space at home where we can quiet down and, and be in breathless anticipation for the coming of Christ into our lives anew. Uh, that is again next Sunday. So please RSVP soon. Our PATH Forum continues as we walk this journey through scripture together. That's at 10 o'clock on Sundays. And I would love to see you there. Even if you are joining us a few weeks into this, there is still um, uh, plenty of time to catch you up and bring you along. Tasha, do you wanna share about the music playlist you've created on our YouTube channel? Yes, I would. Um, so a lot of people have been wanting to hear some of the anthems that we worked very hard on over the last few months. Um, so there is now a way for you to do that really easily. Um, if you go to our uh, St. Peter's YouTube page, um, you can find a playlist entitled anthems and it is a selection of about 22 of our anthems um, from uh, the past however many months that we've now been working from home and um and uh we'll keep adding to that list as we put new things um into the repertoire so that is a really great way for you to listen from home wonderful and for those of us who are really kind of tired of being at home and want a pick me up something to brighten our hearts to be able to hear the music that you and our choir have offered will be a great gift so thanks for making it easy for us tasha I'm so grateful on december 5th we have a thrift shop patio boutique. Uh, very bummed that we won't have our annual thrift shop, but we will have the boutique outdoors. So I hope you'll join us on December 5th. Please mark your calendar uh, so that you can take advantage of that neat opportunity. Are there other announcements I was supposed to make today, but I've forgotten? Tasha. I've got one. Um, some of you will see a familiar face returning to us this weekend. That's right. Our dearest friend, um, Alvin Almazon, is returning to us as a, an additional tenor section leader, and I am just thrilled to my fingertips to have him back. Um, for those of you who have been here for a while, Alvin worked uh, at St. Peter's for about five years and then had to move away, and um, one of the perks of the pandemic is that um, he gets to work from wherever he is um, working um, and we get to hear his beautiful voice. So look for him in upcoming services and especially in our upcoming Lessons and Carols service on November 29th at 5 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. Wonderful. Welcome back, Alvin. What a treat. We've missed you. Welcome home. Thank you so much, Tasha. Our final hymn this morning is Rise Up Ye Saints.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.